Hey there, YouTube. We're going to get cracking, get started with headlines here. We're going to jump into, uh, you know, APs today in history, which I just love. Then we're going to jump into Democracy Now!'s headlines. And, you know, to the Democracy Now! haters out there, show me a better 10 minutes of headlines, okay? Show me, show me a news organization doing better headlines than Democracy Now! Uh, please, I'd, I'd love to have some variety. <clears throat> I'd love to have some variety here. All right, so let's give this a pause and let's jump in today in history. I love this segment. December 30th, 2006. Yikes. Ousted Iraqi dictator Saddam Hussein is executed for the slaying of Iraqi Shiites during his regime. Yeah. I mean, he was an absolute butcher. Let's not, let's not get it twisted. Him and his children were just sadistic butchers, okay? So couldn't have happened to a worse guy, but let's not let's also not ignore the the influence of the West and and all of our meddling and all that. Of course, that can't be ignored either. Nineteen o three, in Chicago, a blaze even deadlier than the so-called Great Content Fire of more than twenty years earlier. About six hundred people are killed within minutes when fire breaks out at the recently opened Iroquois Theater. Wow! What? What was this? The so-called Great Fire of more than 20 years earlier. About 600 people are killed within minutes. When 600 people are killed within minutes? Wow, they couldn't get out of there. Fire breaks out at the recently opened Iroquois Theater. 1922. Wow. More than five years after the Bolshevik Revolution, Vladimir Lenin proclaims the establishment <laughs> of the Soviet Union, the world's first communist oh, state. 1936, fuck you. the United Auto Workers Union stages its first sit-down strike yeah. at the Fisher Body Plant Number no. 1 in Flint, Michigan. Get it done. The strike forces automaker GM to recognize the UAW, That's a right. move that leads to the unionization of the American auto industry. 1948. Successful unions. Oops. In New York, the Cole Porter musical comedy Kiss Me Kate opens on Broadway. 1975. Golfer Tiger Woods is born. And 1928. <laughs> They don't mention that other stuff. They, they don't mention that other stuff. <laughs> hey, 1975, Tiger Woods was born today. Moving on. <laughs> don't let me slide, baby, diamond ring. I know, so I'm muting it. Musician Bo Diddley, one of the guiding lights of early rock and roll, is born in Macomb, Mississippi. Just, I have to mute it. December 30th, Ed Donahue, The Associated Press. Man, they always end it with fucking licensed music. Yeah, AP, not, not all of us have a media license, you fucking millionaires. Anyway, moving on. It's not going to mention that Tiger Woods stuff. Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Israel sworn in the most far-right government in 74-year history, led by Benjamin Netanyahu, <sighs> who begins news. an unprecedented sixth term as prime minister. The new government includes the ultra-nationalist and ultra-Orthodox parties that are calling openly for the annexation of the West Bank, a document listing the new government— Yeah, and, you know, and their solutions about, okay, what do we do with all the people range from killing all of them, uh, putting them in— what else can I say? Nazi style ghettos? I, I would just putting them in ghettos? Or three, this is the fun one, ex exiling them all to Europe. Just, I don't know, just, uh, just uh, boatloads and plane loads of Palestinians just showing up somewhere in Europe. Aren't these, man, it is, it's, God damn it, dude. And we're paying, the United States is paying for it. How long are we going to pay for this? I mean, literally, literally, what, do we have to see the genocide campaign just fucking, you know, to be right in the middle of it? And we go, oh, I don't know, golly gee, maybe I shouldn't have given them all those guns. I <laughs> mean, come on with Israel. And you can bet we're covering more Israel news later in today's stream. So look forward to that.
government's policies includes a pledge to build settlements and occupied Palestinian lands. It reads, quote, the Jewish people has an exclusive and inalienable right to all parts yeah. of the land of Israel. Sounds unquote. familiar. In Sounds like West manifest Bank, the destiny. The Palestinian Authority said Israel's new government poses an existential threat to the Palestinian people. This is Palestinian Prime Minister Mohammed Shdeya. We passed through many extremist governments, but this government is the most extremist. This government is the most threatening. This government ageism, is the most ageism insolent. is very ugly, John. I know for a fact that the international community will not deal with many members of this government. Therefore, to us, we are against all the governments that practice killing and oppression on our people. President Biden's congratulated Benjamin Netanyahu on his return to power saying he looks forward to working with Israel's new government. In a statement released Thursday, Biden referred to Netanyahu as his friend for decades, adding, quote, the United States will continue to support the two-state solution and to oppose policy. I mean, it's just, what are you—who are you kidding? Who are you kidding, man? Biden, I mean, who the fuck are you kidding, dude? The, the, the fact that he can get away with statements like this shows that no one's really paying attention to what's actually happening in Israel. You know what I mean? The fact that he can get away with this fucking absolute fucking bullshit. This complete fluff. Two-state solution. That was dead 10 years ago. Nobody's talking about a two-state solution. You fucking moron. And he knows it. He knows the whole thing's dead. He hasn't done a goddamn thing about Jerusalem after Trump. After Trump, you know, uh, you know let it happen. Doesn't give a shit. Doesn't give a shit. And Palestinians are going to have to start dropping dead en masse and for, you know, for the press, for people to start paying attention. That's the fucking sad part, is that Palestinian people are going to have to be slaughtered by U.S.-made weapons, U.S.-paid-for and made weapons. They're going to have to be slaughtered before, before, before enough pressure on this guy. And, and, don't, and, 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 don't, and, and let me tell you something, folks. Once this, once this geriatric idiot loses to Ron DeSantis, Ron fucking full-on fascist DeSantis, once this guy loses to that idiot, you think Ron DeSantis is going to give a fuck about the Palestinian people? It's going to be a bloodbath. It's going to be a bloodbath. This grinning idiot isn't going to do shit about it that endanger its viability or contradict our mutual interests and values, unquote. Shut up! Biden's statement did not mention Israel's illegal settlements and ignored concerns over the new government's far-right, ultra-religious and ultra-nationalist members. The United Nations has halted some of its humanitarian aid operations in Afghanistan after the Taliban imposed a ban on female workers at non-governmental organizations. FDR, the UN's humanitarian George aid Washington. coordinator in Afghanistan, Ramiz Alakbarov, said Thursday the ban has immediate life-threatening consequences for all Afghans. Jimmy Carter, the people somewhat. Are absolutely enormous, and it's important that we continue uh, to stay and deliver. As we do so, it's equally important uh, that the rights of women and girls, uh, of which we are so much talking these days, are absolutely preserved and protected. There's a couple others. Ukraine's military says it shot down a swarm of 16 drones launched by Russia overnight against targets in Kyiv. The latest attack on Ukraine's capital came after Russia launched one of its heaviest waves of missile strikes of the 10-month-old war. This is a 79-year-old Kyiv resident who narrowly escaped injury after his home was destroyed Thursday. We'll be, co no we'll be covering this today, it. don't you worry. As they say, war is war, and things happen. But this is not war. It's a crime against humanity. Exactly. In Moscow, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said military leaders are looking at attacking railway lines, bridges, and tunnels across Ukraine, I mean, it's both, through Ukraine right? in an effort to cut off the flow of weapons and ammunition sent by Ukraine's allies. This comes as Belarus summoned the Ukrainian ambassador on Thursday and demanded Kyiv carry out a full investigation after a Ukrainian air defense missile crashed in a field in Belarus. Belarus is a staunch ally of Russia and has allowed— So DCH in, in the Discord was questioning the legitimacy of this, that, you know, it broke apart in several pieces, looks very clean, dropped. Looks like it's almost been dropped there. Um, I don't have any opinion at the moment. Um, I mean, all this information I report on, you know, who knows how many fake, you know, staged— 
you know, you know, scenarios that I've shown on the stream. We we really won't ever know until years later, and and even and even then, um, we might not know, right? It makes you it makes you always wonder about you know some of that old footage you've seen from World War II, right? Some of it's definitely real, uh, you know. Motherfuckers can't can't fake dying like that, um, but uh, others, you know, does make me question some of it, right? Uh, but anyway, I don't. I don't really have an opinion on the legitimacy of this because it's you know I don't. I don't really have an opinion on the legitimacy of anything I show when it comes to Ukraine because we're not going to get confirmation until you know until f much later, right? So this is we're just reporting as quickly as we can, right? This missile crashed in a field in Belarus. Belarus is a staunch ally of Russia and has allowed its territory to be used as a staging ground for Russian attacks on Ukraine. The incident has heightened fears that Belarus could be drawn into a direct conflict with Ukraine. Meanwhile, Russian President Vladimir Putin said he expects Chinese President Xi Jinping to visit Moscow in the spring during a video conference today between the two heads of state. In Italy, the far-right government of Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney is cracking down on charity vessels that rescue asylum seekers at sea. Among other things, a new decree seeks to prevent the ships from carrying out multiple unplanned rescues during a single right. mission. Yeah, let Charities them die. Charities violating the new rules could yeah. be fined. And, 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 you know, this, this, idea, the, this idea that you can, you can uh, prevent people from doing this be, be, uh, by preventing people from getting saved and getting rescued— um, that, you know, that's going to stop. That's, that's like the idea of the death penalty preventing murder, you know, murderers from committing murder. You know what I mean? That we've had the death penalty for well, thousands of years, you know, uh, has, has it ever been, um, you know, enough to stop somebody, you know, who's going to kill somebody from killing somebody, you know, the people that are going to kill somebody are pretty set on that. You know what I mean? doesn't really you know the, the consequences don't really you know have much you know what i mean for regular folks sure right but there's always that five percent ten percent probably five percent probably less than five percent of humanity is wants to kill people legitimately you know what i mean maybe even less than that i don't know their ships impounded. Over 100,000 asylum so seekers that, have disembarked in it. Italy over the past that'll year, according it. to government Welcome data. Welcome back, John Axel. Brazil's president-elect, Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, finalized his cabinet appointments Thursday ahead of his January 1st inauguration. Amazon rainforest defender Goldman Prize winner Marina Silva was chosen as Brazil's environmental minister. She held the post in Lula's previous two terms in office, during which Amazon deforestation slowed significantly. Indigenous land and water defender Sonia Guajajara was named Brazil's first-ever minister for indigenous peoples lula also nominated black Man, we need it let me tell you and let me tell you let me tell you something if uh the, the the amazon is one of the most important carbon sinks on the planet a carbon sink is you know similar to a heat sink if you know what that is but it is a you know because of the vegetation because of just the the immense and intense vegetation um uh that bolsonaro was destroying systemically um for profit for a short for a short-term profit uh a, a lot of the carbon dioxide on the planet is absorbed in the amazon um the the more of the amazon that we lose the more uh this you know extreme uh, uh weather we're going to see it's not it's not science fiction it's science okay I don't need to, I'm not a fucking genius. I'm, I don't hold a degree in any of this, okay? I'm not appealing to authority, okay? When, when I look to people who, who have studied this, okay? The gaslighters have done such a great job at destroying the, the legitimacy of science. I'm done with the arguments, okay? Show me your peer-reviewed, uh, you know, study using the scientific method. Oh, I didn't use the scientific method. I used my asshole. Okay. Your information is not good enough. I'm just sick of the gaslighting about all this, okay? We should start listening to scientists. Okay? I'm not fucking crazy. 
educator Aniele Franco as Brazil's new Minister of Racial Equality. She's the sister of Marielle Franco, who was a human rights and racial justice act yeah, activist, great. member of Rio de Janeiro City Council before great. she was assassinated. In so I guess what did Bolsonaro just fucking is he just hanging out at his mansion and, and Lula just kind of walked in and just started being and just started running government? He hasn't accepted defeat. He has, you know. He hasn't accepted defeat. He keeps he keeps every speech. He's like, hey, it's up to you, my supporters, if you want to change this. Basically telling them, hey, if you want to change this, I'm going to need you to riot and riot all day and all night. So I guess that's not happening. I, I, what, I, this is the weirdest transition. This is honestly because I was wondering if this was going to happen with Trump. Right. I was like, is he just not going to leave? You know what I mean? Is he just going to hang out? Right. What is he going to do? 2018. Ahead of Lula's swearing in Sunday, the Brazilian Supreme Court temporarily he, banned registered gun owners from carrying their firearms in the capital, Brasilia, until wow. after the inauguration ceremony. Wow. The move comes amidst rising concerns of violence from the far right and supporters of defeated President Jair Bolsonaro. Yeah. Brazilian police on Thursday arrested at least four people and carried out nationwide raids as they investigated an alleged coup attempt it, led by backers happening. of Bolsonaro, who have refused to accept— It's happening, dude! Lula Lula's in! Lula's in! Oh, dude, it's happening! It actually happened! Wow! Holy shit, dude! That was the that was one fucking rocky ass transition, dude. What was gonna happen, man? Oh, so it happened. It happened. Wow. Except Lula's victory. Bolsonaro has yet to concede. Wow. Brazil has begun three days of mourning over the death of the Brazilian soccer legend Pele, known as the king of football. Pele died Thursday in Sao Paulo due to complications I do, from colon cancer. I do, I do have one story covering this, so you can look forward to that a little later. Cancer and COVID-19. He was 82 years old. Born Edson Aranches do Nascimento Pele is the only soccer player to have won three World Cup tournaments, the first in 1958, when Pele rose to international fame at the age of 17. Brazil declared him a national treasure. Pele also won 10 league titles with his club Santos and is credited with popularizing soccer in the United States when he played for the New York Cosmos in the 70s. Pele was born in the Brazilian state of Minas Gerais in 1940. Brazil's incoming president, Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, said on Twitter, quote, few Brazilians took the name of our country as far as he did. We'll have more on Pele's life and legacy after headlines. South Korea has carried out military drills after it failed to intercept North Korean drones that crossed into its airspace Monday. This is South Korean President Yoon Suk-yeol. The intrusion of North Korean drones in our airspace is an intolerable act. And many people are worried and concerned. We should let North Korea learn that provocations are always met by harsh consequences. South Korea will require travelers arriving from China to submit a negative COVID-19 test amidst China's worsening surge. This comes I after India, Italy, this. Taiwan, and the United States also impose new testing this. requirements on travelers from China. But health I think authorities we should do say it for such measures do little to stop the spread of COVID, and critics say the travel restrictions are being used as a diplomatic weapon and could further fuel anti-Asian hate. And here in New York, the first legal recreational cannabis dispensary opened its doors to the public Thursday at 4.20 p.m. The Housing Works Cannabis Company Dispensary in Manhattan is run by a nonprofit serving people living with HIV-AIDS, as well as unhoused and formerly incarcerated people. Chris Alexander, the executive director of New York State's newly formed Office of Cannabis Management, was the dispensary's first-ever customer. One of the key priorities. Cannabis dispensary opened its doors to the public Thursday at 4.20 p.m. The Housing Works Cannabis Company dispensary in Manhattan is run by a nonprofit serving people living with HIV-AIDS, as well as unhoused and formerly incarcerated people. Chris Alexander, the executive director of New York State's newly formed Office of Cannabis Management, was the dispensary's first-ever customer. Oh, One of the yo! Key was always, you know, addressing the criminal consequences that exist uh, stem from marijuana prohibition and its disproportionate enforcement, but also access, right? And access to a plant uh, that is medicine for so many, particularly in the HIV and AIDS community as well.
And those are some- Man, man, what a baller, dude. Where's his Times fucking Man of the Year award? Uh, where's, where's his, where, you know, how come this man isn't running for president? You know? Keep at it, bro. Keep at it, man. I probably don't agree with all of his stances, right? If he's in the Democratic Party. But keep at it, man. You got the right attitude from what I can see. Uh, making me happy, at least. All right. <clears throat> That was really loud for you, sorry. Um, there you go, folks. That's your headlines for today. Thank you, YouTube. Like and subscribe. Check the description if you want to check us out on uh, Twitch. We have a lot of fun over here. Come on by.